Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we are the IB English Guys. Today we want to talk in a little bit more detail of the political cartoonist uh, from our previous video, Patrick Chappette. He's a fantastic cartoonist, and we think that his cartoons make an amazing body of work. So we're going to talk about his cartoons and apply our mnemonic and talk about that. Why do we like Patrick Chappette so much? Mr. Giles, first of all, political cartoons have, have go back a very long time, right? They go back all the way to the French Revolution. And Patrick Chappat, he really captures a range of global issues. He has really biting commentary and sarcasm and satire, and we've just found him really, really useful. Yeah, he's so passionate about his craft, and he's talented. He has a 20-year career. He publishes for the New York Times and International Herald Tribune. He's, he's a Swiss uh, cartoonist, so he's a true international uh, global cartoonist, and we just think he, he has some, uh, I love the range of body of global issues that he talks about. Yeah, and folks, oftentimes as students, we want to know more about a particular artist or an author. If you, you can find TED Talks that Patrick Chappat has done, and he really articulates some you know, ideas about his craft and his, his journey as a political cartoonist. Yeah, I highly recommend his talk. I really, when I got done with his talk, I had all kinds of really interesting things to think about. So again, we're going to look at these cartoons using our mnemonic. Uh, what is our mnemonic, Andrew? Well, we were talking about how we live in Thailand and how we love the coral. And Mr. Giles, we think that the coral needs our care and love. Very what does that stand for, Giles? That stands for the, for the composition of the, of the cartoon, the narrative, the objects, the color and shading, as well as the language. And I love these over. You nailed it. Topics. Nice. Not yeah. bad. That worked. The mnemonic works, guys. It works really. I think it's great. And again, these are all the different sort of overarching uh, aspects of a cartoon that we can look at. So we're going to explore a couple of cartoons and try to apply that and talk about that. Okay, so we're going to jump right in right now and start exploring some of these cartoons and the global issues. And the first cartoon we're going to look at is titled Sex, Scandal, and the Catholic Church. Uh, and that was published on 17 August 2018. And in terms of context, uh, during this time period, there's a lot of news out there and a lot of controversy regarding the church uh, and some illicit or immoral behaviors with young church members. Uh, and a lot of that wasn't really brought out in the forefront. And it was, they were, the church was accused of silencing uh, the issue. Uh, and that's what Shapat is organizing and talking about in this work. That's right. We're talking about child safety. We're talking about also about corruption in the church um, and, and the lack of sort of ownership that they've taken. Abuse um, of power. Lots of angles for the global issue that's right. in this particular cartoon. Let's look at the composition, Mr. Giles. And for me, the first thing I notice when I look at the cartoon is... I noticed that there's a lot of graphic weight in the foreground. We see a lot of reporters with microphones and cameras, and they're seemingly wanting to, to explore and listen to what this, this Catholic clergy member has to share. He's in the background. Uh, and if you follow the lines, the vectors of the actual image, the leading lines from the microphones and cameras, they lead us to talk to, straight to the clergyman, the priest, and, but then he's deflecting and pointing off to the side onto a sign. So for me, that's kind of, as a viewer, Patrick Chapat has actually guided my eyesight in one direction, and then he's deflected it off to the side. Very skillful use of composition. That's right. So N is narrative. And again, there's a lot of details here. I'm going to talk about a couple. I think there's a clear story about a scandal. Obviously, we know that these reporters are demanding answers from this church, from this church member, this clergy member. And again, this is the story, and it's we can see that they want to they want to get the news and they want to get the breaking news. We also see the characterization. These characters are drawn very cleverly. We see on the on the left side these reporters and their anger and frustration through their facial features, uh, their open mouth, and their their hands thrusting the microphone. This is again a very cr um, cleverly drawn characters. But the main character that I'm drawn by is the clergyman. The way he's portrayed, what he's wearing. His obviously his body shape. Um, it's very it's very unsympathetic drawing. It, but the, his eyes are vacant. He's wearing glasses. We cannot see his pupils. Yeah, Mr. Jaws, I noticed that Chapat does that in a lot of his cartoons. You know, the sinister character or the character that he wants to comment on or criticize. Oftentimes we can't see the eyes. Like they're hiding something. They're emotionless. They're soulless. Very That's interesting. Right. What about the objects? Yeah, for me the object. You talked a lot about the the microphones and the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the door in this case because the door is in a different color as well, which it looks like it's an intentional choice. And perhaps that's meant to represent the notion that the clergy and the church want to give the impression that they're inviting the media in to hear the story, 
but the fact that the door is not fully open and it's partially closed for me indicates that they are concealing some aspect of the truth and they don't want to divulge the entire story, Mr. Giles. That's great. And C is color. And I, I think, again, we see the graphic weight. We see the, the, the blue tones of the, of the reporters. That's quite significant. And then that sort of dark, dark costume that the, that the man is wearing is drawing our attention. And lastly, the color yellow of the sign is drawing my attention to the most important aspect of the, I think, the entire cartoon is, is that sign and what it says. Yeah, let's go ahead and explore the language of that sign for a moment. The sign reads, please respect the silence of the church. Now, for me, this is very, very ironic. I, I've actually, you know, luckily I've been to Europe a few times, Mr. Giles. I've visited my fair share of churches and I've seen many signs that say, please be quiet, please be silent and respect the church. Why is that ironic in this case, and how does that develop the satire? Yeah, this is the opposite type of silence. We're not talking about the respectful silence we see. So he's subverting that sign. He's he's making us think about the actual silence of the church and not speaking out against the sexual abuse. And this is the sort of double meaning of that sign that I think has the impact of the cartoon. Yeah, I think ultimately the message of this cartoon is that, hey, the Catholic Church is perhaps hiding something, perhaps concealing something, and we as global citizens and the global media, we need to do some more exploration and find out and hear that story because perhaps, perhaps some kids were abused. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a second cartoon to look at, and that is uh, a cartoon from during the, during COVID, and it's called India's in COVID's Grip. This, this cartoon was made in April 2021, so quite recent. And again, we see interesting images that to talk about. Yeah, again, using our mnemonic going for C, the composition. Uh, I think this is a really interesting shot, Mr. Giles, because it appears to be a mid shot, but it, the way you can interpret it actually seems like a long shot because I can see the character, the sinister character, the man on the right hand side, he's representing Big Pharma. He's the most prominent figure in the foreground and the graphic weight takes me there. But in the background, I can definitely see the Taj Mahal far off in the distance. And I think that's, you know, of course, used to indicate that we are in India. But I, I do find the, the composition and the positioning of characters quite interesting. And, the, and this, it sets up sort of this dichotomy between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, that's great. And there's a, there's a clear narrative. We see the COVID crisis that's being described here. We also see the, the characters and how they're drawn. And we see the desperation of the Indian characters. And again, we can go into great detail about the man clutching the oxygen tank, uh, the way his eyes are drawn. We see his, he's you know, gasping for air. We see the desperation of the, the, the child that's hunched over. And then we see the Indian man that's pleading with his hands. All those are care carefully drawn to, again, tell a story. And we see the big pharma and the scale, the way that he's drawn twi you know, two times the, the size of, of this Indian man that's asking for, for mercy. Um, again, it's quite significant to talk about it. his hand that's coming up that's quite exaggerated. And again, we see the eyes, just like the priest in the previous cartoon, the eyes, this, the indifference and the apathy as he's thinking more about his prophets than he's thinking about the, the plight of the Indian people. Wow, that was incredibly detailed. That was fantastic. The O is for objects and symbols, and I'll just grab a couple. Uh, I think something that's really important is the briefcase. And, and this man is, you know, he's guarding his briefcase, it's closed probably locked, we can assume, and this would contain the formula or, or you know, how to make or procure COVID vaccines globally. And he's not sharing that information. He's clutching that with his hand. That's not to be shared. And that's sort of the criticism of the cartoon itself. Yeah, C is color. Again, we see the strong color contrast of the, the sort of interesting uh, blues and reds and greens on the, on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it's totally monochrome. Again, this is to accentuate the conflict between these two sides and the sort of apathy and unfeeling nature that's embedded in that monochrome just, uh, color. Yeah, and moving on to the L language, uh, there's so many things we could talk about here. We'll just choose a couple. Uh, for me, one of the things that stands out to me immediately is the label on the hospital that indicates that it's full. Uh, we've all been through the pandemic. Sadly, some of us have lost loved ones and we are horrified by the notion that I or a loved one would go to the hospital and it's full and they have to wait outside. That is just a terrifying thought for me as the viewer. Mr. Giles, what can you say about the verbal irony? Because that truly is where the magic of satire happens. Yeah, absolutely. We, again, readers understand the sacred cow of India. And again, we see a cow in this, in this particular cartoon as well and the significance of the cow in Indian culture. But again, he's using that idea of sacred cow and, and the, the colloquial expression of something that's, that's, that's vital and very important. And again, the sacred cow in this, in this instance is actually the vaccine patent that they're holding on to. 
And again, this is part of the humor, but beneath the humor is a biting commentary. Yeah, and the biting commentary, you know, that big pharma is really in the driver's seat in terms of what's happening with COVID procurement of vaccines and distribution in developing countries making their own vaccines. And sadly, it appears that corporate greed is overtaking empathy and humanity in that case. And I think that is Chapat's commentary. Yeah. So we've done a lot of talking about all these cartoons. So now it's time. What we'd like to do in our next video is to write and to take all these great ideas and take the mnemonic and for you to see what this looks like in writing. Yeah, of course, talking about it really helps with the oral, but we have to learn how to write as well. So next time with our choral needs, our care and love, please join us and we'll take these ideas and show you how to put those into an academic paragraph. I can't wait. This guy likes to write. This Thanks for joining us today, folks, and we'll see you next time and get ready to write. Have all a right. great day. See you guys.